following CBS Sports special broadcast. Good evening. I'm Jim Nance. Welcome to our CBS Sports continuing coverage of the NCAA Championship Tournament. Tonight, the regional semifinals. Most of you will see Notre Dame and North Carolina at the New Jersey Meadowlands, while elsewhere you'll see Georgetown top seed in the southeast against Kansas. That game is in Louisville, where already tonight Providence beat heavily favored Alabama 103-82. to At halftime, James Brown and I will get you up to date on all the tournament action, but right now, let's send you out to the arena for the tip-off as the road to the Final Four continues here on CBS. Welcome to Freedom Hall in Louisville and a fine crowd on hand for the battle between the Georgetown Hoyas, the top-seeded team in the Southeast Regional against Kansas, seeded number five. And here are the brackets. Providence with a shocking upset of Alabama, the second-seeded team. Providence winning 103-82, and so a Big East team is already in the regional final, and Georgetown and Kansas, the victor here, will play Providence Saturday afternoon for the Southeast Region Championship and an opportunity to go to New Orleans in the Final Four. And hello again, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton. And who would have expected both Georgetown and Kansas to be amongst the Final 16 at the beginning of this year? Surprises? Well, not really when you consider the likes of a coaching genius in Larry Brown and a great player in Danny Manning for Kansas and for Georgetown. John Thompson has done a fantastic job and his great player, Reggie Williams. So it's not totally unexpected. Danny Manning is a 6'11 junior out of Kansas, and he is coming off his fine career effort, a 42-point game in the victory over Southwest Missouri State. Manning has shoulders a scoring burden for the Jayhawks this year, and he is the best big man that Georgetown has faced all year. Reggie Williams is the big gun for Georgetown. He is four inches shorter than Danny Manning, although he does much of the same thing. He is part of a great pressured team that Georgetown has. He pops out of nowhere, can hit the jump shot. He is agile and he is smooth. Both of these players are the big stars today and both coaches, Larry Brown and John Thompson, talked about the big stars. Danny is capable of doing a lot of things and so is Reggie. You know, they're good passes, they're good rebounders, they handle the ball and break pressure. Uh, so I, I think that the public will look at who outscores whom. I take my chances at Danny against Reggie. I think it'd be a great game, those two playing each other. Um, it's the supporting cast that really bother me. Um, they got good players. Tommy Heinsohn, it could be like Custer's last stand with Danny Manning against all the good players that Georgetown has. But what really is the center of attraction coming into this ball game? What is it all about? Well, Dick, I think that uh, in this tournament, we've seen speed and quickness really utilize and pay big dividends. I think Georgetown is the premier team to utilize speed and quickness, to up-tempo the game, to force mistakes. That press defense, a full-court press, puts so much pressure on you to make mistakes. They attack, they attack, and they never stop attacking. You better have good guards to handle it. Where does Danny Manning fit in for Kansas against the pressure that Georgetown is going to give them? I think Danny Manning is the guy, if there's one guy in the country that can make up for an awful lot of mistakes, it would be Danny Manning because he can really do the job inside. The one problem that they're going to have is Kansas is if Danny Manning has to go outside and help handle the ball to bring it up the court. They want him on the inside. That's where he can be the most useful for this Kansas team. And, of course, Kansas is going to need all the good ball handlers they can have. And their senior guard, Cedric Hunter, re-sprained an ankle yesterday in practice. And that could really hurt Kansas if he can't go 100%. They were counting on him to do an awful lot of the ball handling and break that press. He's very experienced, the fastest guy on their team. It may fall into the hands of Pritchard and uh, Turgeon to do that job. So... Uh, if they don't get that ball up the court and they turn it over, it's right in the hands of Georgetown for easy baskets. And when you talk about easy baskets and that fine inside play, the guy who has been doing it for Georgetown lately has been the 6'4", Perry McDonald. He has really been their potent inside player. At 6'4", he's fearless. Why he thinks he can go in there and muscle around with the big guys beyond me. But he's a very effective player. He uses his body extremely well. And he goes for every rebound and plays tough defense. 
Your point about pressure being so important was so evident last week when we saw Iowa big defeat UTEP, and it was so evident in the first game with Providence winning. We could possibly have a Big East final in the Southeast region. What are Kansas's chances really against pressure, which has been the name of the tournament so far? Well, the, the guards and the forwards are... There's only one real guard that knows how to handle it well. Turgeon is probably the next best guard to handle the pressure. A Manning, at his size, is an exceptional ball handler. He can come up the court, and he can dribble, and he can pass. But that is really kind of wasting what he would do and wasting his stamina. All right, so that's the scene. Georgetown, the number one seed against Kansas. And we'll be back with the introduction of the starting lineups in just a moment. CBS Sports presents the NCAA Basketball Championship. Tonight's regional semifinal game from Louisville is sponsored by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. And by United Airlines. You're not just flying, you're flying the friendly skies. Back at Freedom Hall in Louisville, Georgetown coming in with a 28 and four record, have won 13 in a row, and certainly a pleasant surprise for coach John Thompson, who reflected on the Hoyas season when we talked to him yesterday. I think this team certainly has been fun. It's been a pleasant team, and it's definitely been a pleasant surprise, and, and I never would have expected them to go as far as they've gone so far, and certainly I'll enjoy as far as they go, but uh, these kids deserve a lot of credit because they, didn't wait till next year. They tried as hard as they could this year, and I'm grateful for that. And Tommy, of course, uh, John Thompson is no stranger to you in your past. Well, I know him from uh, my Celtic days. He played on the Celtics, was a teammate of mine, and he certainly took that experience and brought it down to college basketball. A lot of Red Outbacks theories he, John Thompson uses in this Georgetown team. All right, we're ready now for the starting lineups. Let's go to our public address announcer, John Tong. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Freedom Hall and the Kentucky Fair and Exposition Center for this evening's Southeast Region semifinal round game between the University of Kansas Jayhawks and the Hoyas of Georgetown University. And now, let's meet the starting lineups for Kansas. At forward, a 6'11 junior from Lawrence, Kansas, number 25, Danny. Georgetown at forward, a 6'7 senior from Baltimore, Maryland, number 34, Reggie Williams. For Kansas, at forward, a 6'8 junior from Lawrence, Kansas, number 24, Chris Piper. For Georgetown, at forward, a 6'4 junior from New Orleans, Louisiana, number 10, Perry McDonald. For Kansas, at center, a 6'9 sophomore from Carson, Kansas, number 40, Mark Cullen. For Georgetown, at center, at 7 feet, a junior from Detroit, Michigan, number 51, Ben Guillory. For Kansas, at star, a six-foot senior from Omaha, Nebraska, number 22, Cedric Hunter. For Georgetown, at guard, a 6'2 freshman from New Orleans, Louisiana, number 12, Dwayne Grant. For Kansas, at guard, a 6'3 freshman from Baltimore, Oklahoma, number 14, Kevin Pritchard. For Georgetown, at guard, a 6'2 freshman from Washington, D.C., number 20, Mark Tillman. And uh, introducing the head coaches for Kansas in his fourth season, Larry Brown. And for Georgetown in his 15th season, John Thompson. 
coming up, the first meeting ever between Georgetown and Kansas, two teams rich in tournament history, and we'll be back for the opening tip in just a moment. And the name of the game for both of these schools have been come from behind in the first two rounds of this NCAA tournament. Georgetown was down by 15 in the second half against Ohio State, and Kansas had to come from behind in both of their games against Houston and Southwest Missouri State. Joe Forte, Booker Turner, and Paul Galvan are the officials. Georgetown in the light uniforms, gray, Kansas in blue, and we're underway in the regional semifinals controlled by Dwayne Bryant for Georgetown. Man-to-man -man defense for Kansas starting out. Reggie Williams with the first shot of the game. And the rebound by Mark Tillman. Now we're going to see the Georgetown press come up and see who's going to be able to handle it. And it's Hunter who's going to be under the gun to make sure the ball gets over half court. Sprained his ankle in early February against Oklahoma State. And re-injured it yesterday in practice, but he gets the give-and-go pass and the basket and a fine pass from Mark Keller. And Georgetown started out man-to-man. 2-2 -man. the score. Cedric Hunter is all over the point guard. Loose ball. Tillman lost it and into the hands of Chris Piper. Kansas will run, Dick, but they'll only take good fast-break opportunities, and if they don't have it, They'll be looking for Danny Manning. Manning is playing at the top of the key right now. Richard, a good outside shooter. Hunter looking inside. And the shot put up by Hunter is missed. The rebound by Ben Guillory. Normally doesn't stay in there long as the starting center. And Georgetown throws the ball away. More turnovers coming up from the Georgetown guards. They're trying to create pace and tempo, fast break basketball. They really don't have a great consideration for shot selection. They're just interested in getting them up and rebounding the misses. Kansas, a Final Four team last year, lost to Duke in the national semifinals. And they were in the same regional as Georgetown last year. But the Hoyas got knocked out as Kansas went all the way to the Final Four in Dallas. Here's Danny Manning for the first time and hits the shot with good defense all over. Kansas has an excellent man-to-man -man offense. A lot of good picks and screens. Manning's going to get free inside an awful lot against the man-to-man. -man. And Perry McDonald trying to get the ball over to Dwayne Bryan. It's out of bounds. Still Georgetown ball and the first substitution coming in. Everybody's moving on the opposite side of the court to Manning. That leaves them one-on-one -on -one with Guillory. And it's one fake and over the top. Ronnie Highsmith comes in for Guillory and Bobby Winston, a good trapping guard and a fine ball handler, has come in for Mark Tillman in the backcourt for Georgetown. And also in the game is Charles Smith, who had the great 22-point effort against Ohio State, his career high in the second round. I think Georgetown needs a little good inside offense, too. Smith hits the jumper. Smith hits five three-point shots against the Buckeyes. And it's now 4-4, and the pressure eases off against Kansas. There'll be a real battle on the boards here tonight. Both ball clubs. Great pass. Cedric Hunter, the shot is blocked by Highsmith inside. Here come the Hoyas on the break, and Perry McDonald has the ball knocked away. Good play by Danny Manning, and into the hands of Cedric Hunter. So the pace is fierce in the opening moments, and the score is tied. Manning with his second shot, and following up the basket by Chris Piper, and let's see if they count the basket. There is a foul against Georgetown. And I believe they are counting the basket. It's credited to Chris Piper. And the foul on Reggie Williams of the Hoyas. This is the depth chart of Georgetown. And it gives you an example of how many men John Thompson likes to use. So just about everyone plays at least 10 minutes a game. And he counts on the press and the tempo to wear the other team out. And Larry Brown figures this team is not quite as deep as Georgetown. So they're going to be selective in how much they run tonight. They're checking to see. John Thompson doesn't believe that basket should have counted. And he really is angry at Paul Galvin right now. Galvin's a little guy and Thompson's a big guy. And that's a mismatch, Tommy. John breathes on you, you're in trouble. <laughs> and they're still in conference, although they have 
posted the basket for Piper, and now they've waved off the basket. John Thompson wins that one. And now Kansas has a few words of complaint in Larry Brown. Their score on the board is still six to four. Now they've gone back to four apiece. Tommy Smith has to pick up Manning. Now there's a little rotation down underneath. That turns Pellock loose underneath. And there's Williams just knocking him off. And if the foul was there, it looks like the basket should not have counted. And it didn't. The foul was on Reggie Williams. His first foul. And Kansas will inbound. The score is still tied at four. The opening minutes here at Freedom Hall in Louisville. Piper. Short. Manning is fouled. And it might have been Smith, the six-foot guard, that got a hand on him. And Danny Manning will go to the line. And Tommy, a chance to take a look at Manning. Who, I know you like to call people wide bodies. Danny Manning is a live body. He is as lively as they can get. For a guy his size, he's got more skills than I've seen in many and many a day. He handles the ball so well, and he's got a great shooting touch, Dick. Manning's a junior out of Lawrence, Kansas, and you get an idea of his touch at the free throw line, where he's shooting 74% this year. Kansas trailed Southwest Missouri State by 10 and came back to win as Manning makes one out of two. The rebound by Reggie Williams, and this time they're going to call the foul against the Jayhawks. And it'll be against Mark Pellick, and it appears to be a closely called game at the outset, Tom. Well, Georgetown can suffer through that type of situation probably a lot better than Kansas can because they have a willingness and an eagerness, actually, to go to their bench. Right now, Charles Smith and Bobby Winston in the backcourt tandem for Georgetown. They did not start the game. And John Thompson is angry about something now. It's 5-4. It can't be the score, Tom. The PA announcer said that the foul was on Perry McDonald, and that, of course, was not the case. It was Mark Pellick of Kansas. It's on number 40 blue. And they've just worked that out. Booker Turner makes the correction. You got to catch him early. <laughs> and John... John's got that towel. He's going to get the scorer's attention or the referee's attention with that towel. You know, he may have a lot of people, but I don't think he wants Barry McDonald to get into unnecessary foul trouble early on. Kevin Pritchard is guarding Winston. Cedric Hunter is on Smith in the man-to-man. -man. And Pritchard, that double team on Winston, and he turns it over. A five-second violation against Georgetown. And they have turned it over a few times. Larry Brown's club playing alert ball early. Larry Brown loves to have his team play man-to-man, -man, and they've been pretty aggressive on the press. I'm not sure, so sure Georgetown expected that, that type of pressure. The Hoyas have turned it over four times so far. Kansas has not turned the ball over yet. A little more than three minutes gone by. First half, Jayhawks lead 5-4. Providence shocked Alabama in the first game. Reggie Williams is out guarding Pellet. And traveling is called against Danny Manning. They have so much movement in their offense, Kansas, that when Danny Manning pops out, everybody goes away from him, and then it's one-on-one. -on -one. Smith tries to get the ball inside, and he does to Perry McDonald, who's fouled. And you're going to get a look at the guy who has given Georgetown the best inside offense, Perry McDonald, who will go to the free throw line. He's truly surprising. Uh, Normally, a guy that size has trouble catching the ball in the low post, but he has a, a knack of spreading out, even at his size, and getting the ball from much bigger players when he posts up. He is averaging 13.3 and the second leading rebounder on the Hoyas. But he is not a good free throw shooter, and the, neither, for that matter, are most of the Georgetown players. By the way, the foul was on Kevin Pritchard, his first and the second team foul on Kansas. And I think McDonald is a key guy on their press. To have a guy his size with that quickness, fourth man, that's extra good hands on the defense. But he couldn't make anything at the line. And now Kansas with the one-point lead, deflection. Manning is left open and hits the jumper. So Danny Manning now has five points, and Kansas leads seven to four. And lots of boys by Kansas. Reggie Williams goes for three and misses in the rebound by Cedric Hunter, and here's a fast break leading Manning, and Manning can't save it, and it's Georgetown ball. But that's the idea for Kansas. 
against this Georgetown team. If you can get somebody out on the wing, make them pay for their gambles, let it go strong. Who better than Danny Manning on the fast break? Inside the Perry McDonald working against Pellick, misses the rebound by Manning. Manning is averaging nearly 10 rebounds a game for Larry Brown's team. Seven to four, Manning throws up an air ball and Piper tries to save it into the hands of Reggie Heisman. Here comes Winston, and Winston commits an offensive foul as he ran into Pritchard. That was a very close call, Tommy, and uh, I wonder about that one. Well, it's going to be a lot more close calls in this ball game because uh, Georgetown is so aggressive, and I think the officials want to get control of this game early. 13 foul against Georgetown. You know, I think it's awfully difficult for officials in a fast-paced game and aggressive defense. Almost as difficult for a team who hasn't seen it, if a, if a referee hasn't seen that type of defense. They're in a zone right now, Georgetown. 2-3. Chris Piper misses the last two Kansas shots, missed everything, and here's a two-on-two. -two. Winston pulls up, and the ball is thrown out of bounds, and being knocked out on the court is Charles Smith, but no foul was called. Paul Galvan was right there, and it appeared that Smith just slipped and I think, fell. I think he fell over the official, to tell you the truth. Anthony Allen, a 6'7 freshman from Port Arthur, Texas, who has played a lot lately, and... Uh, Considering Manning's presence, wasn't expected to play so much because of his 6'7 side, but a good shot blocker is in the game. They have interchangeable parts, this Georgetown team. The only real guy that they worry about losing is Reggie Williams with that scoring touch. Five minutes gone by. First half, Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn, Freedom Hall in Louisville. Pellick gets the pass inside. It's blocked by Reggie Williams. And there is Manning getting an easy basket on a garbage shot. 6'11 goes down, picks it up. And scores underneath. That's mobility. Georgetown trailing Kansas by five. And the Hoyas trailed Ohio State in the second half by 15 and came back. Knocked away by Cedric Hunter and a foul by Smith. And that will be a two-shot foul. Two-shot foul called against Charles Smith of Georgetown, his second. Big guys. You'll see 25, the right of your screen, Danny Manning. Big guys usually can't go down that low. They hate to bend, but look at how nicely he gets down and quickly... Puts it back up off the glass. Milton Newton, a 6'4 sophomore from Coolidge High School in Washington, has come in for Kansas. Meanwhile, Mark Tillman, who started at guard, a freshman from Washington, has checked back in for Georgetown. And on the line is Cedric Hunter, who owns the Kentucky or the Kansas career assist leadership. I'm surprised so far, Dick, that uh, Reggie Williams has not really seen the ball that much. Try and get him back in the game, and Georgetown's guards have not handled the ball that nicely so far. You saw Mark Turgeon, the 5'10 senior from Topeka, who's a good outside shooter, and a veteran of NCAA tournaments throughout his career coming in the ball game for Pritchard. So Hunter and Turgeon, that's a short backcourt in there now for Kansas. But uh, I think better ball handling against the potential of the Georgetown press. One out of two for Hunter. And Kansas with a 10-4 lead. Georgetown with the ball. Bryant all the way in. This is the layup. And here's Hunter. Back is Reggie Williams for Georgetown. Cedric Hunter loses control and traveling his call. Not surprising when you have Reggie Williams hovering over you. Well, he just made a good move at him and forced him to just change his direction, and that caused the walk. A timeout. Kansas with a surprising early lead against Georgetown. Bobby Knight will try to motivate Steve Alford and Indiana past Duke. Then number one ranked UNLV faces Wyoming. Regional semifinal action continues tomorrow night on CBS Sports. The Kansas Jayhawks lead top seeded Georgetown 10 to 4. And this is a big story so far with Georgetown having turned it over six times. I think their press Georgetown has been a little bit, bit softer than um, perhaps we had expected. But what has really surprised me is Cedric Hunter's quick hands and how he can get out there and take it right out of uh, out of your hands. Remember Joe Wolf was supposed to be shaken up for North Carolina and he had a terrific game and Cedric Hunter looks like he has no ill effects from his sprained ankle as you see the shocking result. Providence beat Alabama 
by 21 points in the first game of this doubleheader to reach the Southeast Regional Final to play the winner of this game Saturday afternoon on CBS for the right to go to New Orleans in the Final Four. And they're playing Reggie Williams very tough. Tillman shot dropped through, so Mark Tillman, who averaged nine points a game, cuts the Kansas lead to 10 to 6. It's a man-to-man -man press they're putting on right now, and they're going to make Hunter bring it up every single time, hoping that he'll wear down in the second half. Danny Manning has scored seven of Kansas's 10 points. He's in the low post, and defending him is Anthony Allen, and Mark Turgeon comes out of nowhere and gets the rebound. And the jumper by Newton misses, and there's Manning, knocks it out smartly to Cedric Hunter. Now a loose ball. Kicked out of bounds. We're going to look at man-to-man -man pressure, and this man is going to have to face not one, but several different little guys that Georgetown will throw at him. It'll be very physical, and he'll get a true test tonight. Jaron Jackson is in the ball game, a sophomore from New Orleans who has not played as much lately. Reggie Williams is double teamed and will call the foul on Cedric Hunter of Kansas. That'll be the third team foul against the Jayhawks. The Hoyas have committed four and checking back in the ball game for Kansas will be Kevin Pritchard as Hunter goes out. Uh, he'll need a lot of rest tonight if he's going to try and break the press all by himself, Hunter. Uh, Reggie Williams has not handled the ball an awful lot tonight, and uh, they have put a pretty stiff defense one-on-one on him, overplaying him so that he's really denying him the ball, and Georgetown has not been able to get it into his hands. And Larry Brown yesterday said that we want to make Reggie Williams make a lot, take a lot of shots. The thing we want to do is keep him off the free throw line. That's his first point of the game, and so far he has missed two shots from the field. Uh, he is a exceptional offensive player. Georgetown's got to get the ball to him a little bit. He's got two points, averaging over 23 on the year. The score is 10 to 8. Now there's another regional game that was played, and you will see later on CBS, and in a couple of moments, we're going to flash the score. So before we do, we want you to turn away if you're not interested in knowing the score of Syracuse and Florida. Danny Manning from Mark Turgeon stops it through, and the score is 12 to 8 in favor of Candace. Kansas. Tillman out to Bryant. Driving in is Jaron Jackson, and he travels. When you go out and play everybody tight, a little up move and then a lob like that, there's nobody behind you to help. And Manning has got a big height advantage on any one of the Georgetown players. Now turn away, because we're going to put the score up of the Syracuse-Florida game. Turn away now if you're not interested in knowing the score. Stay away. It's still on. It's still on. We'll take it out, and you can come back into action. I caught you. You were looking. <laughs> I know who won, but I'm not saying. 12 to 8 to score in favor of Kansas. And the ball is knocked away by Jeff Gelder, who's come in the game, and Chris Piper scores. Nice assist that time by Pritchard. Nearly a turnover by Anthony Allen on the inbound pass. 14 to 6 to score. And it matches Kansas' biggest lead so far. And Kansas just has well of amount more of, of boys than Georgetown does at this stage of the game. 14 to 8 to score. Richie Williams, double team, throws it in anyway. And that is his first field goal of the ball game. And it comes with 12-12 remaining in the first half. It's 14 to 10, Kansas. It's just been soft pressure most of the time by uh, Georgetown. They're not really attacking with that press. Turgeon and Pritchard in there along with Gelder, number 33. Gelder, a 6'5", freshman from Charleston, Illinois. Manning misses. And the rebound by Dwayne Bryant. Reggie Williams, three on one for the Hoyers. Missed the bank shot. And a great rebound by Tillman, and he'll go to the line. Good offensive rebounding, relentless offensive rebounding by the Hoyers. Well, Georgetown, if they can get a rebound, you watch the offensive rebound coming up here by one of the Hoyas, Tillman. There's four jerseys with gray letters on them, and that's what happens on fast break basketball team. You have good cleanup rebounds because you don't have time to concentrate on blocking out. 
Bobby Winston comes into the ball game, replacing Dwayne Bryant. So it's Tillman and Winston in the backcourt. Reggie Williams, Terry McDonald, and Anthony Allen up front for the Hoyas. Bow was on Gelder. His first. Off balance, Williams. Allen tried for the rebound, and it comes into the hands of Chris Piper. Now Pritchard. And Pritchard loses it out of bounds. A little sloppy hand action here. His head is up, the ball bounced high, and all of a sudden it came up off one fingertip and hit the official, and it's out of bounds. You know, as badly as Georgetown has played as early in this game, they're still in it. Down by only four. Piper with a great block of a pass from Allen. Good play by Chris Piper, who plays the toughest opposition scorer. He's a fine defensive player. Reggie Williams is guarding Pritchard now. Georgetown and man-to-man. -man. Danny Manning lost control, and Gelder loses it out of bounds. So Kansas getting a bit unraveled now and giving the Hoyas a chance to cut that four-point lead again. Whenever it gets into Danny Manning, the Hoyas would love to surround them and build a house around them and nail a roof down on top of them. It's not happened so far, Dick. Manning has nine of the 14 points scored by the Jayhawks thus far. Winston goes low to Perry McDonald. Reggie Williams, two-point shot. Just inside the line, and Reggie Williams now six points leads the Hoyas. Some of the younger Georgetown players now are really picking up their poise, and they're looking for Reggie to get them back in. Georgetown has won 13 in a row, and they play a 40-minute game. As John Thompson says, we add it up at the end and see where we are. Geldner. Finds Manning, and a fine pass by Geldner. And Manning really sealed the defender on his back so that it was a real easy pass down the lane for that two points. Manning has 11 points on five for nine shooting. And we're halfway through this opening half. Kansas leading 16 to 12, and they've led ever since the Hoyas took a two nothing lead. Kansas foul against Pritchard. And that'll be the 15 foul against the Jayhawks. Cedric Hunter will come in for Mark Turgeon. 16 to 12. If you watch uh, Dan Manning seal a defender. The defender is supposed to go over the top as the ball comes towards the middle of the court. Instead, Manning will take a step up and not let that defender get on top of him. And that, it's a very easy pass for Gelda. He actually forced the defender behind him, Dan Manning, and he's got all those cute little moves. Danny Manning, and of course, Larry Brown wants to get him inside because that's the advantage that Kansas has over Georgetown as they get it out to Reggie Williams. Williams inside the three-point line misses. Perry McDonald wins the race for the ball. Wide open is Winston. Winston not about to shoot it. This is not a good shooting team that Georgetown has. Most of their offense is off the points coming from turnovers. You get layups, that ups your shooting percentage. Williams wending his way in, and he gets the bounce, and eight points now for slow-starting Reggie Williams. Boy, when you surround him, he shoots that jump shot with a straight arm, so you've got to go right over the top to even get close to blocking it. Scooter Barry, the son of Rick Barry, who will be inducted into the Hall of Fame, has come in the ball game, and they're going to call the blocking foul against Tillman of Georgetown. Look at McDonald just hit the boards on this one. Carve out some room underneath for himself. And for a little guy, he's quick to the rebound, too. Now, you don't have to have size if you can know when to position yourself. And then as the ball is in the air, move your feet. North Carolina moving their feet to the tune of 30 to 22 over Notre Dame in the first half of the Eastern Regional Semifinal at the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey. And into the ball game is Milton Newton for the second time in the, in the contest. Charles Smith, a good shooter for Georgetown, for Georgetown came in for Mark Tillman. Smith is guarding Cedric Hunter. If you can keep up with all these substitutions, you're going to get a medal from me. I got a lot of practice in the UTEP-Iowa game, to tell you the truth, Tommy. Here is Newton. 
Gets, tries to crash the boards for his own rebound, and out of the pack comes Charles Smith for Georgetown. They have their guards rebound, and that's how tough they can be on the boards. Jonathan Edwards, a 6'9", sophomore from New Orleans, number 42, has come in for the first time. In the lane is Smith with a one-hander, Charles Smith. And you know what John Thompson said? He said, look, I want you to shoot. If you don't start to shoot, I'm going to recruit a shooter. <laughs> so he decided to start to fire away as Turgeon comes back for Kansas. You wouldn't have to tell me that. <laughs> uh, here's a strong move inside Manning, and Manning might have got a piece of him, but that was not an easy shot. Team fouls are five apiece right now. And right now, Georgetown on an 8-2 to two run after Kansas took a six-point lead at 10-4 and again at 14-8. Eight. eight minutes, 20 seconds to go first half. Newton. And the rebound by Edwards. And traveling called against Edwards of Georgetown. It'll be Kansas's ball. It's a pretty important stat coming up right now. Offensive rebounds for uh, Georgetown and defensive rebounds. So it's pretty even for, uh, you know, the five to three. That's a pretty good ratio for Georgetown. And of course, Kansas, when they have lost, they have not boarded well defensively. And that's one of the critical things that they've got to do today. And so far, they've handled the press almost perfectly. I think Georgetown will get a lot more aggressive with that press as the game goes along. Boyers have come back to tie the game at 16. Our third tie of this first half. Mark Turgeon gets it into Manning. Double teamed and Manning scores anyway. 13 now for Danny Manning. They have a big man in that lane ready to help out at all times. And they'll shoot a second guy at Manning. But they're not getting there quick enough. Reggie Williams for a three. And our first three-point shot of the ball game. And Reggie Williams, who's hitting at a 40% clip, gives Georgetown a 19-18 lead. Their first lead since the opening basket of the game. Manning comes back. And he gets the hoop. And right now, the two superstars we talked about are doing their thing. It's 20-19 Kansas. Nearly seven minutes remaining in the first half. And a spirited first half indeed here in Louisville. Winston controlling outside. Turgeon guarding it. Kansas still in the man-to-man, -man, and they're not getting to Reggie Williams quick enough. Reggie Williams now in double figures with 10 points, and right now it's the Reggie Williams-Danny Manning show. Well, a timeout, John. Thompson said, who's the guy that brought us to this dance? <laughs> Reggie Williams, well, let's play his music. Manning. Foul, and it's going to be against Jonathan Edwards. It'll be the first foul on Edwards and the 16th foul on Georgetown. So the next foul against the Hoyas, and Kansas will shoot the bonus. Into the ball game for the first time is Keith Harris, who had a fine game on this Freedom Hall floor with 15 a career high against Louisville in Kansas's victory over the Cardinals earlier in the year. There's the story offensively thus far. Manning on the line. Both ball players have so many skills to apply to their team's efforts, and both coaches use them very wisely. One out of two for Manning, who has scored 16 of the Jayhawks' 21 points so far. And we're tied at 21, six and a half to go, opening stanza. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn in Louisville. Southeast Regional Semifinal. Williams tries a bounce pass inside. Allen made a good play. Big play by Allen. He got the ball back so that Williams could hit another shot, and Reggie has 15. It wasn't a good pass to Allen by Reggie, and, and Allen just nicely flipped it back out. Reggie Williams has hit his last four. Boyers by two. Great defensive play by Charles Smith. Rebound by Anthony Allen, and he's fouled. Great Boy, defense. Do they come up in waves behind the initial part of the fast break? It's like, that's my ball, I don't care. And, and when they put it up on the glass, this shoots so poorly at times that they know there's going to be a lot of rebounds. Now, you watch them attack. He gets out into the passing lane as they're playing in that little zone. He picks it off, 
Got his head up. Now he wants to get back into the middle. But look at all the jerseys, gray jerseys behind him. And they are looking for that rebound. Clean up rebounds galore by the Hoyer. Foul was on Chris Piper, his first. And each team has 16 fouls as North Carolina has taken a 10-point lead over Notre Dame to the half. Allen makes one out of two, but the rebound by Bobby Winston. And Georgetown, with their biggest lead right now, and the ball with 5.40 to go in the first half. Winston goes baseline, no basket, and a foul called against the Hoyas. When, uh, Allen really did a, a great job of picking off Winston's man for that drive, but a little bit too great. And Allen commits the foul. That is his first foul, and it is the 17th foul against Georgetown. So Kansas is into the bonus, and it'll be Danny Manning going to the free throw line. Here's Larry Brown, who said this is his hardest year at Kansas because he has relied too much on freshmen in support of Manning and Hunter as seniors, and he doesn't think he's done justice to the guys like Hunter and Danny Manning. He thinks uh, that they he might have been a little hard on his kids, too. The young players expecting too much from them, and... Uh, so some of these guys are a little bit sensitive, and I had to cool off a little bit. Larry Brown has been an outstanding coach and a winner everywhere he's been. One out of two free throws for Danny Manning, who has 17 points in the game. It's 24-22 Georgetown. Five and a half to play the clock. Keith Harris is guarding Reggie Williams now. The freshman guarding this senior Reggie Williams. Tough assignment for Keith Harris. Gonna try and pop Williams out from the screen. Smith with a fake. Smith. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn here at Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky in the Southeast Regional Semifinal. Georgetown right now has established its biggest lead of the game after trailing by six early in the game because of six Georgetown turnovers. The press has not affected Kansas, but right now Georgetown has taken control. Georgetown started to get their game in gear and then throw the ball away themselves. Kansas really got more turnovers than Georgetown did in the initial part of this ball game. Danny Manning with 17 leads Kansas. Reggie Williams has 15. And Mark Turgeon has just hit a three-point shot first of the game for Kansas to bring the Jayhawks to within one. Georgetown has won 13 straight games. Kansas struggled toward the end of the year. Jayhawks have played the Hoyas Cup thus far. Reminder, Providence with a shocking 21-point victory over highly touted Alabama in the first game. Smith misses, and the tip-in by Anthony Allen is good, and it's 28 to 25, Hoyer. When you penetrate like Smith did that time, Manning has to come over and help out. That turns the Georgetown center loose on the boards, and you can't afford to do that. Allen made him pay. Are you surprised that Georgetown has not forced more turnovers from Kansas? I absolutely am, Dick, because uh, their defense is the type of defense that you expect them to have a, create a lot of turnovers, but they haven't played real aggressive with the zone press. It's been a soft man-to-man -man pressure defense, not the aggressive one we're used to see in Georgetown play. Manning now with 19. Danny Manning has hit his last four shots. Nearly a steal for Manning, who's playing all over the floor. Winston goes up and travels. We're seeing great individual talent from John Thompson's great star, Reggie Williams, who started slowly and has 15. And Danny Manning, the live body, who is the spark for Larry Brown's Jayhawk. Timeout. 3.18 to go in the first half. Georgetown's got 15 fouls to waste on Danny Manning and probably 20 fouls. They're going to be a little physical with him. Then they start to build a little house around him. Look at Manning trying to establish position. It doesn't happen, but I'm telling you, he's going to go through a tough night tonight. Now you're going to see Manning, the left of your screen, come into the, try and stop the penetration. That turns Allen loose. He's got quick feet and good leaping ability, as all to all the Georgetown big guys. The rebounding story, and Georgetown has taken an edge as Ronnie Highsmith comes back in the game. The keys, as Tommy said at the outset, Georgetown off the offensive glass, Kansas defensive rebounding, and the Hoyas with the edge and a one-point lead, 28-27. Milton Newton, number 21, 
in the game in the backcourt along with Cedric Hunter the senior Mark Turgeon really a three guard offense now for Kansas against the Hoyas zone defense they got to find a man now to provide some offense now that Manning's on the bench and this guy Pellock can score inside Chris Piper this is the baseline shot will they call the basket and no no basket and crashing the boards Kansas and the foul is called the foul is on Newton, number 20. Foul is on Newton, Newton, his first foul, and Georgetown will go to the line to shoot one plus the bonus. Later tonight, the Eastern Regional Semifinal tape delay between Syracuse against Florida following your local news. Manning comes back in after a short respite. Manning has 19 points, and going out is Chris Piper. Not much of a rest for Danny Manning. No rest for the weary with uh, when you're playing Georgetown. And that's what uh, John Thompson counts on. Wear you down. We're going to throw numbers at you. Lots of fine athletes run you up and down. Now let's see if it starts to take its toll on Dan Manning. Perry McDonald with the first free throw at his first point of the game. He is the second leading scorer for the Hoyas at over 13 a game. And you talk about all the players that he brings in in waves. Well, 11 of the 12 Hoyas who have played have already collected a rebound. Here's the pressure by Georgetown. So far, Kansas has done the job against it. Just man-to-man -man press and kind of soft at that. They're backing off Hunter, letting them bring it up. Kansas early had a six-point lead on two occasions. Biggest lead for Georgetown was four. Right now, they're sitting on a three-point lead. Two and a half to play opening hand. Pellick, 6 9 sophomore. Here's Manning, double team. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Mark Turgeon. Well, they're trying to set it up. Five seconds to go. Turgeon may have to put up the shot. Cedric Hunter does with one second to go. And the rebound by Mark Tillman. And here come the Hoyas. Perry McDonald couldn't gain control. Georgetown rebounds as well as anybody in the country out of a 2-3 zone. Trying to establish their biggest lead of the game. Here's Reggie Williams, and he'll have a chance to do just that. He is fouled and will go to the line to shoot two shots. And the foul is against Newton Newton of Kansas' second foul. You know, Georgetown moves Reggie Williams all around the court, so you never know where you should go try and find him to double him all that type of defense you got to be very alert that time he ended up in a low post and they got him the ball Williams a 79 percent shooter from the line and Larry Brown who lost Greg Dryley, Ron Kellogg and Calvin Thompson from last year's final four team and Archie Marshall who had knee surgery four for four from the line now for Reggie Williams who has 17 points and the biggest lead of the game for the Hoyas five points 32 to 27, 138 to play. Georgetown in a 2-1-2 zone right now. Newton misses. Manning saves it out to Turgeon, but Kansas is struggling from the outside. They normally shoot a little bit better than that from the outside, but Georgetown uh, saying, uh, if you're going to beat us, beat us from there. Turgeon, Cedric Hunter, now they get it into Manning, and Reggie Williams pick the ball off. Manning is claiming a foul, but didn't quite seal Reggie Williams like he did uh, Allen. Minute to go in the first half. Georgetown with the ball and a five-point lead. McDonald bumps on the baseline, and he'll go to the line again. And not only is Georgetown doing the job defensive rebounding, but they're getting good inside shots and going to the line when they're fouled. You know, Perry McDonald, when he's in a low post, he's a fine leaper, quick to the jump, and he's also a lefty. And when you're playing inside defense, you don't see that many lefties. And I think that's what really creates situations for the defender that allows McDonald to get the shot off. The fact that he's a left-hander. The foul was on Danny Manning, his first foul of the ball game, and McDonald hits the first free throw. Only one senior. And that's Reggie Williams for Georgetown, and they're bringing him along. 
a great program, and we said at the outset, no one expected Georgetown to do this this year, and Reggie Williams gets a breather. He has scored 17 points and is replaced by Sam Jefferson, a 6'9 freshman from Washington. And there's Chris Piper back in the ballgame. I think uh, John Thompson got his game plan from Mao Tate Sung. Attack, 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 <laughs> and attack their weaknesses and come at them with waves over the hill. All I can do is hit a bugle playing now. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. And a seven-point lead for Georgetown, and they have shot 57% to only 42 for Kansas. Cedric Hunter. Hunter gets the basket, and it's been a while since the Jayhawks have hit one from outside. And now Georgetown can play for the last shot, leading 34 to 29. Kansas had the early lead. The Hoyas turned the ball over unexpectedly. Georgetown's strength inside has paid off. Gambling is Cedric Hunter for the steal. And traveling called against Mark Tillman, and so Kansas will have its chance for the last shot. And they're going to bring in Kevin Pritchard, a good outside shooter. Chris Piper will go out. Manning has 19, and after Manning, Hunter has five for Kansas. And the same story for Georgetown, with Williams with 17, followed by Charles Smith with six. This might not be a bad lineup for Larry Brown to use. Four good ball handlers and uh, three very decent outside shooters to go along with Manning. Final seconds of the first half. Kansas trying to cut it to three. Turgeon misses a three-point shot. Cedric Hunter at the buzzer. No good. And Georgetown, the top seed, will go into the dressing room with the lead. That is the end of the first half. Here in Louisville with the score, Georgetown 34, Kansas 29. CBS Sports coverage will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Michelin. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. Mazda cars and trucks. The more you look, the more you like Mazda value. And by the Discover Car, the credit card that offers a wide range of financial services. Is sponsored by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. Mr. Goodwrench, no one knows your GM car better than Mr. Goodwrench, no one. And by the American Express car. Don't leave home without it. And we're back here, ready for the second half, and we have a mild controversy going, because apparently with the score 5-4 in the early moments, a Georgetown player was not listed in the book of eligible players, and right now they are debating whether Georgetown should be hit with a technical foul. And while they do that and decide what's going on for Georgetown starting the second half will be the freshman backcourt of Dwayne Bryan and Mark Tillman, senior Reggie Williams up front with Anthony Allen and Perry McDonald for Kansas. Cedric Hunter and Kevin Pritchard are the guards. It's Chris Piper. Mark Pellick and Danny Manning for Kansas. Same five that started the game. And I guess no technical foul called against the Hoyas. Manning goes baseline and misses the shot. Perry McDonald at 6-4 gets the rebound. Reggie Williams goes for three. And getting the rebound, Anthony Allen almost got the offensive rebound. But traveling called against Kansas. They got the job done anyway, Tommy. Well, Pellock got the rebound, but just could not keep his feet underneath himself. Any adjustments Kansas can make? I think they've got to get the ball more to Manning and count on him, or somebody's got to start penetrating and making that back line of the Georgetown defense move. And traveling call against Wayne Bryan turns it over to Kansas. Let's see, let's see if Georgetown gets a little bit more aggressive on their press than they were in the first half. Not too many steals. Tillman is all over Kevin Pritchard. Tell him up on top. Man-to-man -to -man defense for the Hoyas. Now they're into a zone. 1-3-1. One, one. Pritchard has not taken a shot. He came into the game averaging nearly 10 a game and has not attempted a shot so far. Number 14, 
And maybe Larry Brown says he's going to have to start getting underway. He misses, and the ball comes in out of the hands of Dwayne Bryant. And the freshman feeds Reggie Williams in the lane. Ball knocked away, and we'll have a tied-up ball, and the possession favors Georgetown. The possession arrow faces Georgetown. Now, Syracuse is playing Florida later on tape delay on CBS. Quickly turn away, and we're going to post the score. Turn away right now. If you're not interested in knowing the final score of that game, keep turned away. The score is in. It's still in. We'll take it out. Not yet. It's out. You can come and watch the game and have fun like we're having. Boy, you sound like a traffic cop. <laughs> you got to be with these things, Tommy. I don't want anyone to get disappointed. Driving in and getting the basket. All the forwards and the guards of Georgetown can take it strong to the hoop. Harry McDonald that time, and that's his first basket of the ball game for McDonald. Second leading score for the Hoyas. 36 to 29, and that's even the biggest lead of the game for Georgetown. Setting a pick is Pellick, and Cedric Hunter hits from outside. Hunter's a good shooter at 52%. The 1-3-1 is successfully fronting and backing Danny Manning, so the uh, Kansas guards cannot find Manning down in that low post. Piper, the good defensive player, defending against Reggie Williams with 17 points at the half. Danny Manning had 19. Tillman working his way in the lane, and the basket counts at a foul. <laughs> good play by Mark Tillman. Those are the type of shots that this club can make. The off-balance, the wacky shot. Now you watch, he takes a little up fake, starts to head to the middle of the defense. There's Pellick taking the middle away from him, bodies him up. Should have been off-balance, but he made it look easy. Pellick commits the foul, his second, and he'll go out of the game, and coming in will be Keith Harris, the freshman from Santa Monica, California. And Kansas coach Larry Brown also brings in his senior guard from Topeka, Mark Turgeon. And going out is Pritchard, who still can't get untracked. And here's Tillman on the line. Three-point play for Mark Tillman. And the biggest lead of the ball game for the Hoyas, eight points at 39-31. Good, soft, man-to-man -man pressure. Back into a zone. Kansas can't get the ball inside. Three-point attempt by Mark Turgeon, his second of the ball game, and it's now a five-point game. He has got to hit that outside shot. Get this Kansas ball club going. Going to have to hit the outside shot if they can't get the ball inside and extend that Georgetown defense. Reggie Williams misses a baseline shot. Rebound, Keith Harris. And he posed almost long enough for Reggie Williams to pick it out of his hands. Kansas trying to cut it to three now. Wide open is Chris Piper. Two on two zone. They've changed the look. Anthony Allen doing a good job smothering Danny Manning inside. So is Reggie Williams. But Chris Piper hits and it's a three-point game. It's 39-36. But they start to hit those fringe perimeter shots from 15 feet because Georgetown's daring them to shoot those shots. Kansas has scored five in a row now in the first four minutes of the second half to come within three. They were down by eight a few moments ago. Knocked away in a fine play by Keith Harris as he fronted Perry McDonald at the last minute. And now Kansas trying to narrow it to one. Or better if they can hit a three-pointer. One, three, one. And they'll have a man in front of Manning and a Reggie Williams at the bottom ready to help out underneath. Piper. It's two in a row. And Georgetown has his lead sliced to one. 39 to 38. And here's Kansas now in three-quarter trapping pressure defense. And Georgetown wants a timeout. Seven straight points run off by the Jayhawks. They finally washed the monkey off their back and advanced to the regional semifinals. Now Syracuse faces first-time tournament surprise Florida late night tonight on CBS Sports. Georgetown so concerned with Danny Manning coming into that low post area that they're letting guys like Piper 
get wide open for 15 foot shots now you watch Reggie Williams is really more concerned with Manning and all of a sudden Piper has the shot up and away and that's a relatively easy shot 15 feet and that's what's happening and Tommy look at the opposite of the first half when Manning was really the whole team but now the rest of the club has nine and Manning hasn't scored in the second half and the Jayhawks are down by only one after Georgetown built up their biggest lead of eight it's really almost a fantastic insult to the rest of the Kansas players to give them those type of shots they can shoot 15 footers Reggie Williams misses a three gets his own rebound blocked by Keith Harris Loose ball, Cedric Hunter, and they stepped on the line. John Thompson with a few words for Booker Turner. It'll be Georgetown ball. He's mad. Here's a little foul, I think, on Reggie Williams, and here comes Turner hustling up, and he's almost stepped on John's new shoe shine. You mean the foul was on Reggie and John Thompson's mad? Basket not going to count by Charles Smith and a foul called against the Hoyas a pushing foul against Ronnie Highsmith Highsmith is coming the ball game along with Bobby Winston Charles Smith is there along with Reggie Williams and Perry McDonald well they're still playing that soft man-to-man -man press and they have Manning up there to try and pick Smith off so that Hunter can take it strong to the basket. Players have turned the ball over now 15 times. Six in the first five and a half minutes of this game. Kansas looking to take the lead here. And they do. And it's Keith Harris. And that's the first lead for the Jayhawks since they had a 20 to 19 lead in the first half. And Georgetown was in a man-to-man -man that time, and Kansas really knows how to eat up a man-to-man. -man. Tommy, Keith Harris, the freshman from Santa Monica, has made an impact coming in this game off the bench. He can stick it, and he can put it on the floor. And he's played defense, and the Jayhawks have scored nine in a row now. And Smith throws the ball away. You watch Manning set the pick now on Smith and really try and create an opening so that uh, Hunter can just blow by his defender and put pressure on the rest of the Georgetown defense. Timeout, Georgetown. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn, Freedom Hall in Louisville. Georgetown had a lead of five at the half, upped it to eight. But Kansas has scored nine in a row now to have a 40 to 39 lead without Danny Manning scoring a point. Well, I think what really went on is John Thompson at halftime said, let's try and shut Manning out. The other people at Kansas might be a little bit tired. Let's force them to score. And they're no dodos, these other <laughs> Kansas players. They're giving too many easy shots. So Georgetown back into man to man right now. That was so successful in the first half. Picking off the give and go is Jaron Jackson who came in for Perry McDonald and an offensive foul called against Jackson. Jackson just replaced Perry McDonald. And Tommy, Georgetown has not scored any points tonight off of their vaunted pressure defense. Well, they're not really playing anything but a soft man-to-man. -man. Unless Smith goes out there right now and steals it off the dribble from Hunter, they're not going to score any points off the press. They scored a, a jump-switching zone presses. They haven't used any of that tonight. And after watching Kansas in practice yesterday, you kind of wonder why. Because they were having problems handling the press as Piper turns the ball over for the Jayhawks. The Hoyas have not scored any points in the last four minutes. We have 13.44 to go in the second half. Kansas with a one-point lead, 40-39. to 39. Inside a high Smith. Rebound, Turgeon. Three on one break. And Keith Harris is fouled and will go to the line. He has done it defensively off the boards and on the offense, leading the way there on the fast break. He's much better for this ball club than Pellick right now because he puts a little speed on that fast break on the wing, but that was some kind of bounce pass by Turgeon that just sat right up there for the wingman to pick it up. Ronnie Highsmith with his second personal foul, and here is Kevin Pritchard 
who came into the game scoring nearly 10 and has not scored yet in the ball game as he gives Cedric Hunter a breather. So the backcourt tandem for Kansas now is Kevin Pritchard and Mark Turgeon. And Keith Harris misses the first free throw. He's a 71 percenter, and he's a freshman. Larry Brown, only the seventh coach to bring two different schools to the Final Four. UCLA in 1980, Kansas last year. Jayhawks have scored 10 in a row now. You know, Georgetown does not have any real dominant inside player to go to at the tail end of the game. Smith for three, Charles Smith. A three-point ball for Charles Smith. Here it comes now, a little zone pressure. Converts into man-to-man -man as they fall back. And he, they're starting to get Kansas thinking about the press. Give and go, and very wisely, Pritchard had no shot. It's 42 to 41, Georgetown. Danny Manning hasn't handled the ball much lately. He had it briefly there. Highsmith doing a good job on him. But they got back all the rest of them doing the job. Manning, basket will count. No, no basket. And they're going to call the foul instead on Danny Manning, his second personal. He was trying to seal the defender once again for the lob pass. Now you watch what he does. They invariably have a tendency to push off at the last instant just to get that extra little room to catch the ball, and that's what he did. Cedric Hunter back in for Kansas. Anthony Allen comes in for Georgetown as Ronnie Highsmith goes out of the ball game. So Allen may get the assignment now on... Manning, who scored 19 at the half and has yet to score in the second half in nearly eight minutes. Smith hit a three-pointer before misses this one. Reggie Williams comes back, tipped up. And Piper saves it for Kansas. But Georgetown crashing the offensive board. Still hanging in there. They'll get two and three attempts if you don't lay a body on them. 42-41, Georgetown. Biggest lead, eight points early here in the second half. Kansas came back and retook the lead. Harris finds the open man. Hunter, good play by Allen. And here's a break. Smith and Winston. Smith lost it but recovered and hit the jumper. All right, there was good hustle by Pritchett to take away the lane so Smith couldn't drive all the way and Smith almost lost it. But what poise and composure. And timeout called by Kansas. Charles Smith, who scored 22 against the Buckeyes, now has 11. Block shots is like the amber light, and as soon as it's made, it turns to green, and watch what happens. They're off and running. Everybody coming up the court. Now Smith loses control as Kansas really had hustled back, but look at those five gray jerseys attacking the basket and going for the rebound even if the shot had been missed. And Smith has scored five in a row, Tom, to give the Hoyas a three-point lead after Kansas came back from an eight-point deficit to move in front 41-39. to That's the time remaining, 11-49. There, another game in progress, North Carolina against Notre Dame at East Rutherford, New Jersey, and it's a five-point lead for the Tar Heels with time running out for Digger Phelps. One three zone, one zone again by uh, Georgetown. Manning still has not scored in the second half. Had his best opportunity there. And the man defense for Kansas. Winston moving out from the baseline. Jaron Jackson. Now Reggie Williams, who hasn't gotten a basket in almost 15 minutes. And only two free throws in that time. So he's been ice cold. So the two stars have cooled off considerably. And Piper is really doing a great job of denying him the ball, too. Cutting off the passing angle tour. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Kansas playing tough. Man-to-man -to -man defense. Reggie Williams is short. Goes after the offensive board. And a foul against Kansas. Good hustle by Reggie Williams. Well, Reggie's got these little herky-jerky moves. Now, you try watch Piper just harass him a little bit get his hand on the ball now he comes over tries to play his shooting hand good defense got the left hand up on the shooting hand destroyed the rhythm a little bit but then lost control of him on the rebound action Chris Piper is second foul each team with three team fouls with 10:45 remaining 
And Reggie Williams still cold from the field, 0 for 5 this half. Double team. They're building a house around Reggie Williams the way the Hoyas did it against Danny Manning. Now Reggie was doing it with pop outs off pitch the first half. Winston and Williams. They swing it. And Smith goes in and the foul call against Kansas. Good quickness inside by Charles Smith. Well, you've got to respect his outside shooting a little bit. He's hit some from out there, so when they come rushing at him, he's quick enough to take that initial off-balance and then turn it into penetration. Danny Manning, guilty of the foul. That's personal foul number three on Danny Manning, who scored 19 points in the first half and right now has grown cold. And of course, George's kind of doing a fine job. He's not getting the shots. Well, Manning is playing the center spot, so he's the uh, goalie, so to speak, like in hockey. He's protecting the basket, so anytime anybody's going to penetrate, he's likely either going to block the shot or pick up a foul. And Smith right now is saying, I'm taking it to the middle. Charles Smith has scored Georgetown's last seven points. And it's 46 to 41, five-point lead. Oddly enough, the pressure by the Hoyas has not been what's worked for them tonight against Kansas. Man to man. Cedric Hunter. It's the shot. Two-point shot by Cedric Hunter, who has nine in the game. I'll tell you, they disguised the defense so well they had me confused. That was really a 1-3-1. Little zone. John Thompson will try a lot of things before he settles on it. And Bobby Winston driving to the hoop. And right now, it looks like the Hoyas are content with finding an opening and driving to the basket. Pritchard commits the foul, by the way, his third personal. Here's Mark Turgeon, who's hit a couple of three-pointers for Kansas. And Pritchard goes out. North Carolina leading by four. 30 seconds to go against Notre Dame at East Rutherford. Here is Milt Newton, a sophomore from Coolidge High in Washington, who's familiar with a lot of the Hoyas, including Bobby Winston. They played together on the playgrounds in D.C. He's in the game. This guy has a fascinating player. You know, he's a forward guard type. You say, how can Bobby Winston at 6'5 be an effective player? But he is big, strong, got quick hands, and is the prototype of the type of player John Thompson wants for this particular ball club. He's not looking for size. He's looking for quickness, hand, and foot speed. And Winston's got it. Bobby Winston's high school coach played for John Thompson. So he knew what he was getting in this youngster. One out of two for Winston. And coming back in is Wayne Bryant, the freshman from New Orleans. In fact, there are four players on the Georgetown team, natives of New Orleans, including Perry McDonald, who would relish going back to the Crescent City for the Final Four next week. Kind of a homecoming. Four-point Georgetown lead. Here is Cedric Hunter working against Dwayne Bryant. Well, he's had to work for every step up the court tonight. Cedric Hunter. Manning has taken only two shots this half and has not connected on either one of them. No points for Dane. Chris Piper. Rebound, Perry McDonald. All right, look how active they are. Defensive class. They really move their feet. All the Georgetown players for rebounds. Really quick team that comes at you in waves, as we talked about in a surprise team this year. Good pass inside to Mark Tillman. The shot is blocked. And there's McDonald saving it for the Hoyas. Kansas had come back from an eight-point deficit early here in the second half to take a lead of two, and then Georgetown went back to work. And the two stars have been quiet. Reggie Williams still hasn't connected in the second half, with, and neither is Danny Manning. Boy, they'll pluck you out, there'll be a lot of rebounds coming off the floor, and they'll beat you to the ball most of the time after it hits the floor. Georgetown. North Carolina beats Notre Dame and moves into the Eastern Regionals final. That'll be played on Saturday at East Rutherford. Here is Keith Harris. 
who was the spark off the bench for Kansas when they made their run. He hit some big shots. 47-43, Georgetown. Less than eight and a half to go. McDonald gets inside, basket good, and a foul against Kansas. Oh, he had his eyes glued on Danny Manning trying to taunt him into a foul. But the left-hand shot really creates a situation where he gets fouled. Here at Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky, the Southeast Regional Semifinal between the top-seeded Georgetown Hoyas and fifth-seeded Kansas. We have eight minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the second half. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn reporting. You're looking at Georgetown's pressure defense, which really hasn't accounted for much against Kansas tonight. But right now, the Hoyas have a seven-point lead, making their presence felt with good defense like this and good rebound. Reggie Williams. First basket of the second half. And that's one of the first seal steals we've seen in the game, Dick, where they've gone out and really started to overplay Georgetown. And when they do that, it produces easy hoops. Georgetown led by eight early in this half. Kansas came back to take the lead. Danny Manning will go to the line, and he's fouled. Reggie Williams with 19, and Manning with 19. As Reggie Williams left your screen, just stepping out into the passing lane, picks it off, and then it's a two-on-one situation. But Piper comes up and really makes a hustle play, but so does Reggie to maintain possession and then score. Right now, the Hoyas have their biggest lead of the game, nine points. Despite 17 turnovers, and good shooting by Kansas in the second half. Well, Manning carried the load the first half as uh, they were going to him almost exclusively. John Thompson made an adjustment playing his own defense that would front and back Manning, and it put a lot of pressure on the other Kansas players, and they responded nicely, particularly Turgeon and Harris. Manning with his first points of the second half has 21. You saw Williams get his first basket. He has 19. They're the high scores. Georgetown had outscored Kansas 13 to 2 before those pair of free throws by Danny Manning. 7.35 remaining in the second half, 52 to 45 in favor of Georgetown. Double team inside on Tillman. Good baseline pass to Dwayne Bryant. And now Williams for three. Three-pointer for Reggie Williams. You know, I think Georgetown is just hiring Kansas out playing that man-to-man -man defense. They moved the ball around so much. Reggie Williams is all alone at the head of the key. Second three-point shot by Reggie Williams. And it's time for Larry Brown to go to the drawing board with a 10-point Hoya lead. For those of you who have been watching Kansas and Georgetown throughout the night, let's show you how North Carolina advanced in the East. Tar Heels winning it over Notre Dame by six. North Carolina couldn't get its running game going, so they went all night long to freshman J.R. Reed. Last minute, up by four, the Tar Heels. Here he is, J.R. Reed, with two of his tying career high 31 points on the night. Reed was 15 out of 18 from the floor. Let's go back to Louisville and Dick and Tommy. Thank you very much, Jim, and a 10-point lead, biggest of the game. He can't keep Reggie down forever. He missed seven straight this half, but has hit his last two and leads with 22 points. And, Tommy, even though that Georgetown has gotten a few points off the press, tempo has paid off for them. They have really counted on wearing some people down, and Danny Manning has been one of them, but they slipped it in nicely that time. That was a 1-3-1 zone, and they moved the ball around nicely and got it into a Manning in the low post. They have not been able to do that a lot in this half, Dick. Manning with 23, also playing with three fouls. That was his first basket, and it came with just under seven minutes remaining. The rebound story and a tremendous edge for Georgetown, particularly off the defensive glass. I mean, they're out rebounding them more than one to one, and it should be really by far like two to one defensive rebounds by Kansas to offensive rebounds by Georgetown. I think that's been a telling factor. Bobby Winston comes back in the ball game, and going out is Dwayne Bryant. Manning with his first basket this half, and he's going to have to be the man Larry Brown will have to get the ball to if he's going to come back in this game and time running out. Eight-point lead. 
Man-to-man -man defense for the Jayhawks. Hunter all over Winston. Keith Harris has done well for the Jayhawks off the bench. Seven on the shot clock. Reggie Williams. Short with it and maining the rebound. That looks out the pass picked off by Tillman. Fine play by Mark Tillman, the freshman. Boy, that sure was. That was like a football play. He just grabbed it with his fingertip. Perfect coverage on the down and out. And a new clock for Georgetown. Tillman in the lane. Manning had the ball, lost it. And it's going to be Kansas ball as Williams last touched it out of bounds. They're trying to really take it into the lane a lot to make Manning move. And that creates some offensive opportunities. But now you watch Manning and Williams go for the ball. Manning loses it and then says, I'm going to the floor for it. Went off Williams, so it's Kansas' ball. 6'8", junior Ronnie Highsmith comes into the ball game, and Anthony Allen goes out. Cedric Hunter, who re-injured an ankle in practice yesterday, has looked awfully good playing with the injured ankle. They're going to call the block on Mark Tillman of Georgetown, and that will be the 15th foul against the Hoyas. Trying to take a charge right here from the low angle, we'll see that perhaps he doesn't have his feet in the proper position, but he was moving backwards, and I think that should have been called an offensive foul on Hunter. Charles Smith, who has scored 13 points, replaces Tillman, and Smith has really added some offensive punch other than Reggie Williams in this game. You saw Providence, the score was right in case you missed it, with a 21-point victory over Alabama in our first game tonight. Another change of defense, man-to-man. -man. And it causes the turnover, and Reggie Williams in the fourth court now, 5.20 to play. 55-47, Georgetown leading, and the next foul on Kansas will put Georgetown into the bonus. And Kansas has been pretty much man-to-man -man all night long. What did Larry Brown say? If I don't play zone, my players will get really mad at me. <laughs> Smith in the lane, in and out, and the rebound by Chris Piper. Turgeon, he's hit a couple of three-pointers. And Georgetown will extend their defense. They'll go out and chase the ball around now, and they're going to take away the outside shot. That should leave a, leave a little room for Manning. He'll call the foul on Reggie Williams, and that'll be his second personal and team foul number six against Georgetown. So both teams now with six. North Carolina beat Notre Dame. J.R. Reed, the freshman with 31 points. Kevin Pritchard, who has struggled scoring tonight, has not scored, coming in averaging nearly 10 a game. Now, if you turn away, we'll post the Syracuse-Florida score. That's our tape delay game later on. So if you turn away now, we'll post the score if you're not interested in seeing the tape delay game later. The score is in now, so don't look at your screen. Now we'll take it out, and now you can watch this game. So no-no. <laughs> Richard scores his first points of the ball game. Kevin Pritchard, the freshman from Tulsa, and he's going to be a good one for Larry Brown. He can hit that outside shot, and he can take it strong to the basket, and Pritchard can also play the deep. Kansas has scored four in a row after trailing by ten, and we're winding down to the four-minute mark in this game. Reggie Williams, good position inside, and a foul called. Williams and Thompson want a goaltending call, which they won't get. Now uh, Manning is starting to turn loose now and anything that's coming to the inside knows he's got to play some stiff defense, shot block. Georgetown was looking for a uh, goaltending call, but it really wasn't. The foul is on Chris Piper, his third foul, and into the game is Cedric Hunter for Kansas. And so now, Kansas with 17 fouls, and it'll be the bonus the rest of the way for Georgetown. Reggie Williams makes good on the free throw, 79% for the year. Leading rebounder and scorer for the Hoyas and 6-7. Smooth as velvet performer. He's One got, out of two. Got all the skills, Dick. The passing skills, the dribbling skills. And for a guy that's slightly built, he's got a heart as big as uh, his size, too. I mean, he gets in there and rebounds. Under four minutes to play. And it's Kansas ball. Trailing Georgetown by seven. The winner will play Providence Saturday for the right to go to New Orleans. 
And they'll call a foul away from the ball, Ronnie Highsmith. And that'll be his third foul. And now Georgetown has put Kansas into the bonus situation, one plus the penalty. Both teams in the bonus. There's the timeout score. You know, when they played man-to-man, Dick, the uh, Georgetown Hoyas, all of a sudden, uh, the other Kansas players have had difficulty scoring, and they still have had difficulty getting the ball to Manning. Here is Manning, who has scored 23. This is the front end of the one-and-one, and it's Highsmith with the rebound, as you saw Turgeon come in the ballgame. So an opportunity for the Jayhawks to cut the lead to five. Goes by the board. And they'll come out and harass. Now Georgetown will try and eat up a little time. 325 remaining, second half. Georgetown led by five after one half. Up their lead to eight, and Kansas with a big rally. Scored nine in a row to take the lead. Manning, if the foul is on him, will have committed his fourth team, fourth personal foul. But let's see who it's on. They call it on Piper, and it's the fourth on Piper. Now, when they get down to uh, shooting time, the, their go-to guy, Georgetown, is Reggie Williams. And uh, he's not a low-post player, so Kansas will have to go out and find him. There is the free throw story as Georgetown has missed five and six for Georgetown as they bring in their freshman Mark Tillman once again as Reggie Williams goes to the line. That's the one thing Kansas didn't want to see, Reggie Williams on the free throw line tonight. Well, because it put a lot of their players in foul trouble, but uh, he also is a pretty decent free throw shooter. Let him take his shots. I don't give him the extra one. Six out of eight. Winston missed an opportunity and another Kansas foul. They're just not getting the boards to get their own game going, and that foul will be on Mark Turgeon, his first one plus the bonus. Watch how Georgetown hits the board after this free throw. They step inside. I mean, there's Winston. He's pretty physical. He had a wide open shot. He should have made that. But then it hits the floor, and look at Perry. He just, Mc, uh, McDonald pick up the ball off the floor. I mean, jumping ability and quickness to go get the ball, very important for Georgetown. I don't think I've seen a team Hustle after the ball as much as Georgetown does. Reggie Williams with 24 and 9 rebounds. Perry McDonald going for his 11th point. Charles Smith with 13. But McDonald is off the mark. He still has 10. And the 9-point lead. Kansas' best 3-point shooters are Mark Turgeon and Kevin Pritchard. Pritchard's not in the ball game right now. 2-1-2 two -two zone by Georgetown. 1-3-1. Uh, one, one. Ball knocked away by Perry McDonald. Sooner or later, their pressure, whether it's full court or half court, man-to-man -man or zone, pays off. And here's Kevin Pritchard, who will come in the ball game and stay in the game. Harris goes out, and so the two best three-point shooters, Turgeon and Pritchard, are in there now for Kansas. But when you get worn down by the... Well, a real tempo of uh, what Georgetown wants you to do. The outside shooters start to lose a little bit in their legs. Ball taken away by Perry. I checked that Reggie Williams took the ball right out of Chris Piper's hands. Turgeon trying to stay with Winston. Kansas is seeing too many opportunities go by the boards because of the great hustle and relentless play of Georgetown. They're really a smart basketball team for so many young players. They'll pull it out. I think uh, Reggie Williams has had a lot to do with that. Being on the court at key times, telling them what to do. They open it up now and spread their offense. They have 15 on the shot clock, 2-10 remaining in the second half, and a nine-point lead for the Hoyas, looking for their 14th victory in a row. Great pass, Williams to Ronnie Highsmith. What a pass. I'll tell you, that was one for the highlight film for the tournament. Turgeon comes back and misses. Cedric Hunter, the rebound. Manning lost it to Reggie Williams. And Georgetown taking over this game with their biggest lead, 11 points. And they'll spread it out, work the clock down. They get to sooner or later, it seems. And the Kansas foul 
will send the Hoyas to the line. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn, we have a minute and 32 seconds left in the Southeast Regional Semifinal at Freedom Hall in Louisville. And it's been Georgetown, relentless, hanging in there. They lost an eight-point lead and now have opened up an 11-point margin. Chris Piper has fouled out of the game for Kansas with six points and three rebounds. Let's take a look at that last basket. Here's Reggie. He's got to slow him in. He can make his move. They all converge on him. And what a pass. I mean, he just slipped it between two defenders. And for, I mean, you've got to have experience to know that the man is open and how to get the ball through that defense like that. Piper fouls out of the game. Reggie Williams now with 25 points. He is the game's high scorer and two points more than his season's average. Danny Manning, 23, leading Kansas. Just not enough for the Jayhawks tonight. 62 to 49, Georgetown. And the Hoyers are looking at a fourth game against Providence in the regional final on Saturday. Timeout, Kansas. And the basket by Pritchard. Timeout called by Larry Brown. You're looking at an angered Larry Brown, who has just been hit with a technical foul, which will mean two shots plus, plus possession, and maybe a little bit of a frustrated Larry Brown, who came in as an underdog with one real big gun in Danny Manning, and uh, for a while, Kansas uh, more than held their own against the Hoyas, Tom. I think it's been an overachieving team. Uh, with all the freshmen that they've had, they, Manning managed to uh, carry them on his shoulders the first half, I think John Thompson changed his defense a little bit, choked off Manning in the in the early part of the second half. Kansas came back with some of their people on the outside, and John Thompson changed up the defense and made uh, Manning have to go score the points. And I'll tell you, uh, Georgetown also just plain, simple, out and out beat him on the board. Tommy Manning scored 19 points in the first half, hitting 8 of 12. He has tried only three shots and has scored just four points in the second half. Providence with a shocking victory over Alabama and an impressive 21-point triumph. And it looks like an all-Big East Southeast Regional Final between Georgetown and Providence. It'll be their fourth meeting of the year, Georgetown having won two of the previous three. I think the Big East teams have really shocked a lot of the other teams from throughout the country because they play the up-tempo, upbeat game, very physical. And what's going to happen when two Big East teams play against each other who know each other so well? I mean, it's going to be a war, baby, a war. I think it is, and uh, Providence beat John Thompson's team by three points when they met earlier in the year. At Providence, Georgetown won the last two meetings and then defeated Providence in that last meeting in the Big East Tournament. No surprises. Just out and out, who's going to play the better game? Nobody's going to confuse anybody else. Highsmith misses the front end on the one and one after Mark Turgeon's foul. 1.15 to go. Three-point drive short by Turgeon. The rebound by Highsmith. And Kansas forced the foul, and it's going to be Danny Manning with number four. John Thompson, who has been gentler to the public, he has certainly mellowed in the eyes of many people. He will be the Olympic coach, as you know, in 1988, and freely admits that he looks upon every player as a possible prospect for the Olympics. And, you know, he's going to have an eye on Danny Manning, but, you know, he now is looking beyond just the game he's coaching. I think uh, John is a perfect coach uh, to represent the country in the Olympic Games. His press defense is the man-to-man -man aspect of it, the jump sh switch. The rest of the world's going to have trouble dealing with that. Second effort in the basket by Keith Harris. And the Kansas calls a timeout, and Larry Brown still yelling at the official. Later tonight on tape delay, it'll be Florida against Syracuse in the other East Regional semifinal following your local news. That'll be a tape delay game. You know that North Carolina defeated Notre Dame to reach the Eastern Regional Final, which will be played Saturday afternoon at East Rutherford, New Jersey. Syracuse, Florida, later tonight on CBS. Tommy, as you know, as we get to the end of... Any season, I guess, involving Larry Brown, no matter where he is, there's always the question as to whether he's going to leave 
wherever he's at. He's been at Kansas now for four years. He claims he's happy. He doesn't give any indication he wants to leave. He's been a winner everywhere he has been. And right now, Larry Brown has given no indication that he'll move on. I do know that he is very happy with his experience at Lawrence, Kansas. I think uh, Larry has been searching for happiness. And if he's happy in Kansas, you don't follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> 64 to 53, the biggest lead, 13 points by Georgetown. And the Jayhawks are all out of the well of timeouts now as Winston will inbound for the Hoyas. Big season of surprise for Georgetown. They're going to win their 14th straight game. Thanks a lot to the play of Reggie Williams, who is fouled. I tell you, Reggie Williams, Dick, handled the press. So beautifully against three defenders. That's how many times he's seen the zone press and traps and how to get out of them. All that stuff that happens in the Big East. I think has helped these guys become better ball handlers against aggressive defenses. And we're talking about Providence, which really Rick Patino has designed his team around the kind of style of Georgetown. And a lot of people think that Providence has a better offense, really, than Georgetown. Well, they certainly have some outstanding three-point shooters in uh, Brooks, Delray Brooks, and Billy the Kid Donovan. And they were popping them tonight here in uh, Louisville. Mark Turgeon's last game. He's a senior. So is Cedric Hunter. The two guards leave having played their final game. And I'll tell you what, these guys knew what it was like to get to the final four as they did last year, reaching the national semifinals. 30 points for Reggie Williams. Georgetown ups its lead to 13. And Mark Turgeon was a long shot to make it in college ball, and he did. Three-point shot by Jeff Gelder, who's come in the ball game. And it's 66 to 56. And Scooter Barry, Rick Barry's son, Sophomore is into the ball game now. Gambling for the steal against Reggie Williams, and it works. Harris to Pritchard. Barry is fouled. So Richard Scooter Barry will go to the line. Georgetown has been trying to get the ball to Reggie Williams to break that press, knowing that he's one of their better free throw shooters so that he could... Uh, if and when foul, make them pay the price. And the name of the game now for George, for Kansas, just keep fouling. They're down by 10 points, 25 seconds to go. Barry misses the first free throw. Cedric Hunter is going to come back into the ball game for Larry Brown. So we'll hold the applause for a, a fine career for Hunter. He's going to come back in. Now it's a nine-point game, 66 to 57. Georgetown uh, stern looking on the bench. And there's Michael Jackson, who, by the way, has been accepted into the Kennedy Institute for Politics at Harvard. Quite an honor for Michael Jackson, who is a great performer for John Thompson. And that probably means more to John Thompson than any guy moving into pro basketball. I think John Thompson has been a much maligned basketball coach. People say, uh, hoya paranoia, you know. Um, he really deals with his team much like the Celtics do. We are our team, and it's the rest of the world, and we're fighting you. And I think he learned that from Red Auerbach. And uh, he takes great pride, like you say, in these athletes being students in the school. And I think he, he treats them as college players, where he thinks perhaps some other college coaches treat them as pro players, where there's a lot of flash and a lot of dash and meeting the press. Thompson doesn't think that's important. Well, the way it is in a tournament, one and you're out. And Kansas, the tasted Final Four wine last year, is out. 68 to 57. Cedric Cutter fires his way in. Danny Manning. Rebound no good. And a, this is all a credit to Larry Brown, the way this team is scrapping in the final second. Okay, a sco scooter. Barry, he's rebounding better than his old man did. He didn't have scrapping on that offensive board. He's only 6'2", his old man was 6'7", and Barry's going to go to the line. Let's see if he can shoot foul shots like his father. Father was a great, great 
free throw shooter. Underhand style. I don't think that's the way Scooter shoots it. 12 seconds to go in the game. They're battling to the very end. Over the top. It'll be Georgetown ball. Pritchard comes in, replacing Barry. 68 to 57 to score. We're looking at Georgetown and Providence in the Southeast Regional Final on Saturday afternoon. And there's Milton Newton from Coolidge High School in Washington. Manning with only one basket and four points in the second half. No way Kansas could do it with that kind of production from their big man. And you credit Georgetown for really erasing him from the picture. Well, they threw a 1-3-1 one, one. zone, uh, half-court zone defense, and they had him fronted. And they also had that bottom man, that one man along the baseline, ready to play him from behind. So it's awfully difficult to find him with passion. Reggie Williams. There's Barry back in there, Reggie Williams. By the way, was the MVP of the NCAA tournament win by Georgetown a few years ago against Houston as a freshman. And a lot of people don't realize that with all of the hoopla surrounding Patrick Ewing, it was this guy, Reggie Williams, who was the MVP. Hits the free throw. He is now 15 of 17 from the line. The one thing Kansas didn't want to do was put him on the line, and he's done it to the tune now of 33 points and going for number 34 here. Matching his uniform number, eight seconds to go. 70 to 57. Gildner. Rebound McDonald. Two seconds and the foul with one second on the clock. Kansas will finish at 25 and 11 in Larry Brown's fourth year. In a school with a great basketball tradition. National champs back in 52. And for John Thompson, one step closer to another Final Four. Here's Perry McDonald on the line, where Georgetown has outscored Kansas from the free throw strike tonight, 27 to 8. They took it to the hoop, and uh, those inside rebounds, you know, the offensive rebounds, putting them back up, you always kind of get fouled on that type of situation, so they were much more aggressive. That's the way John Thompson likes it. The Georgetown Hoyas have defeated Kansas 70 to 57 and will advance to the Southeast Regional Final where they will play, I guess, the Cinderella team at this moment, the Providence Friars, two Big East teams. Reggie Williams scores 34 to lead Georgetown. Danny Manning had 23. So Georgetown wins right now. Let's go to New York and our colleague, Jim Nance. James?